So a few weeks ago, I posted a video of my DML speakers in action. Um, had a few comments on that video of people just asking me how I built them. So I thought I'd just make another quick video to kind of cover that. Obviously, I have already built them, so I can't do like a step-by-step -step through the build process, but it's pretty simple. And uh, I'll just talk a bit about how I made these speakers and why I made them like this. The concept of these speakers is what's called a DML, Distributed Mode Loudspeaker. And the idea of these is that you have a, what's called an audio exciter, which is basically like a speaker with the cone removed. So you just have a magnet and a voice coil which vibrates. And that sticks on to pretty much any surface that it can stick on. Uh, it'll vibrate any surface that you put it on. So the idea then is that the, the vibrations go into the, the panel and then propagate like across the panel as waves and then obviously those continue out into the air as sound waves. So you actually get sound coming from the entire panel rather than just uh, the small, relatively small cone of a speaker. So they do sound a bit different and for the money, what you can build using this technology um, actually sounds really great. So I saw these videos on YouTube under the Tech Ingredients channel and just I just thought it was such an awesome, amazing idea, a great concept. So um, decided to look into it a little bit further and this is the, the result. At least this is the first result because I actually have another pair that I'm working on to try and improve these a little bit. A lot of people who are experimenting with DML are using uh, types of foam and various like cardboard kind of materials and things like that. Um, apparently that all sounds pretty good, but personally I, I wanted something that I could put in my living room and my wife's not going to hate, I'm not going to hate, you know, something that just looks good and kind of looks like it, it's presentable. So I started looking into plywood and then came across these, which are bamboo ply. Uh, so this product is actually called Bamboo Laser Ply. I got that from a company called Plyco in Victoria. I'll put the link below, but I'm sure you can get similar kind of products uh, elsewhere. Two things that you want to look for in a DML panel are lightness, because obviously the lighter it is, the easier the voice coil can actually vibrate that panel means you can get more volume from the same power. So something light, but also stiff because the panel is, is too flexible uh, or not stiff enough, then it just has the effect of, I think, sort of muddying the sound a little bit. Um, and these bamboo ply panels are only 2.5 millimeters thick and at 90 centimeters long, they can actually flex quite a bit. So, and I think you can hear that. Uh, the sound's a little, little soft, maybe a little muddy. Um, so I've put some bracing on it and that has improved things anyway. So the panels are 40 centimeters wide by 90 centimeters by 2.5 millimeters deep. Uh, obviously it's a bamboo ply. I've also got two coats of Danish oil just to bring out the grain and make it look a bit nicer. Uh, they actually look quite nice straight out of the box, but it's just added a little bit more depth and a little more texture to that, which is really nice. It hasn't, the Danish oil hasn't really seemed to affect the sound very much either. I think if you went for like a polyurethane finish or something hard, it may come, have the effect of dampening the panel, which is why I went for the Danish oil, which I think is more of a kind of softer finish. So these frames I bought on eBay, they're actually clothes racks, uh, bamboo clothes racks. So they were about this high and this wide originally. So I've, I've cut it down both in width and in height, uh, just to something that looks a bit more acceptable for a living room. Uh, and then I cut the panels out to fit in the, in the frame that I then had. So they're about 110 centimeters tall by about 50 centimeters wide or 45 centimeters wide, something like that in total. So it doesn't have a lot more presence in the room than just a, a sort of pair of floor standing speakers but it's, it's a bit more unique and they sound great as well. And uh, just hung the panels directly on there with rope. Uh, so you can see they just free hanging. 
like that. Uh, which is good, it means I can actually also experiment with different materials and different types of panels and just hang them on these same frames. So you can also obviously attach it using a sort of soft compliance suspension like a, a foam tape or something like that uh, but then you do have the run the risk of having rattles and things because of course the panel does vibrate that's how it makes sound so this kind of avoids all of that there are no hard kind of touch points between the frame and the panel it's just this rope which obviously doesn't vibrate or doesn't carry any vibrations uh, so it's just like avoided that whole thing my next panels will actually have a more of a connection um, and I'll tease those now what I've got so far because they are a work in progress but if you are interested in seeing how those turn out uh, please hit the bell and subscribe and I'll be making that video in the next month or so as I progress with that. So just taking a look at the back of the panel now you can see the the exciter uh, so the the exciters that I got were from Dayton Audio uh, I'll do a close-up or something. So this is the thruster model. It's a 32 millimeter voice coil, 40 watt uh, power handling. And I got that because I only wanted to use one exciter per panel. And I wanted it to be able to, uh, you know, handle a fair bit of power and hopefully put out a fair bit of bass. Um, we'll get to that shortly. Um, but yeah, anyway, they sound great. Uh, just don't expect a lot of bass. So as you can see, these are just wired up like normal speakers. You've got your positive and negative there. Um, down to here, I just bought some banana plugs and some, uh, some posts and just made a little connector here using a, a plastic bracket um, just so I can connect and disconnect them easily. I can also, using this, I can also easily disconnect the exciter as well so if I want to swap out panels and things like that I can just unhook it undo the rope and they're off you can see here I've got some bracing on the back so originally these were just a panel and they sounded pretty good uh, I did wonder if I could make them a bit more kind of punchy and um, a bit more focused because they do tend to have quite a diffuse sound uh, originally I just put two-sided foam tape and just put a brace all the way along and it just completely de over deadened the panel um, sounded like crap so that's why it's a bit messy I've ripped that off and I've just got this which is only uh, stuck to the panel at either end so it sort of adds a little bit of rigidity to the panel overall but it doesn't completely damp all of the panel here um, so that's obviously still free to move this sounds a lot better um, I may still experiment with different bracing again um, after I finish my next pair. As I mentioned, one weakness of the DML speakers is the bass. So I, I've tried to measure these. I'm not don't have a, a really great setup, but I have measured the frequency response, and basically it drops off pretty substantially. Uh, rolls off under about 200 Hertz uh, just naturally um, so obviously there's there's no bottom end in that sound at all so what you want to do is supplement the sound of these with a subwoofer this is a Canton 10 inch powered subwoofer here uh, and what I've done is there's no crossover on these at all they're just running full range but because of that natural uh, dip or drop off in the frequency response I've just tuned the sub, so crossovers around sort of 150 like that, and then I've just dialed in a bit of volume just to kind of even that out, um, rounds out the bottom end nicely. And I'll play a few clips in a minute and you'll see what I mean. I'll play it with and without the sub. Um, for like home audio kind of listening, no, I can't imagine anyone would be really happy with these if they didn't have some kind of supplemental bass. I do plan to experiment in the future with uh, various configurations to try and improve the bass out of my panels and or make a just a DML subwoofer. I've heard people talk about it, I've never seen an example of one that actually works or sounds good at all. So it'll be interesting kind of experiments, I've got a few ideas but um, that's, that's all to come so 
ding the bell there if you want to uh, see my experiments in that area. So you might have noticed on the back of my other panel the exciter itself was dead center in the middle of the panel. So 45 centimeters down and 20 centimeters in. Uh, the, the most recommended position for these is at the two-fifths, three-fifths position. So that's two-fifths in from one side, so three-fifths from the other side, and then two-fifths from the end, three-fifths to the other end. Uh, and the reason for that, apparently, is that as the waves kind of emanate out of this across the panel, uh, if it's evenly spaced, they sort of travel out like this and then reflect from the edges and come back and you can get cancellation uh, because they're you know the same waves going out both ways reflecting back cancelling each other out so that may lead to kind of unpredictable like dips in the frequency response and things like that or just a lower overall volume i'm not 100 percent clear on that but so what i did was i measured what it sounded like at the two-fifths, three-fifths position. And then I measured what it sounded like at the dead center position. And the curves in the frequency response were a bit different. And sometimes when, you know, when one would dip, the other was uh, peaking. So they kind of supplement each other where there might be a dip in this one, then that's filled in by the other one. I'm not sure if this was the best way to go, but I did the two-fifths, three-fifths on one panel and the 50-50 center on the other panel for that reason. I think in my next um, next iteration of my panels, I'm gonna start with this and just move it around and experiment, do a lot more measuring. Um, it's also gonna have multiple exciters on the panel. So obviously there's potential for more sort of cancellations and things like that. It's just gonna be a lot of trial and error. So um, do tune in for that. All right, guys, that's enough about the build. If you do have any questions, feel free to comment below the video. I will answer any questions if you're looking for more info. Uh, before I get to playing some samples, I'll just run through my setup really quick. So generally, I'm just playing music from Spotify on my phone. That goes to a Google Chromecast audio, which is just straight in uh, line in on my integrated amp. From there, the signals just split uh, through a mini DSP. That's not the HD version, but just the regular one because I'm cheap. Uh, and I just put it through there to apply a bit of broad EQ um, just to even out the, the frequency response a little bit. It doesn't add a heap to the, the sound, but it's a slight improvement, so it's in the chain. Uh, yeah, from there, the sound goes to the panels, obviously, uh, running full range. And then also I've got the Canton 10-inch sub which is active, so that's just dialed in to fill out the bass a little bit more where the panels are lacking. Yeah, that's about it. Comment me any questions. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, let's get on to some music. Bass off and show you what it sounds like without the subwoofer. This is all panels.
Hope you're enjoying my travel photos as well. Alright guys, that's about it. Uh, thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions about how I made these panels or anything else about them. And uh, I'll post some more samples up soon. Catch you then.